folks. Welcome to this week's episode of Art Studio Chat. Rod Moore with you from the Learn to Paint Academy. Welcome. Now, in this episode, I want to talk to you about something I've started using recently, which is water-based oil paint. Sounds a little odd. When I first heard about it, I thought that doesn't kind of make sense. You know, is it oil or is it water? And uh, so I want to explain what water-based oil paints are to you and talk to you about some of the benefits and, and maybe some of the drawbacks as well of water-based oil paints. So I've gone and done a bit of research and I've found a couple of different brands. Um, if you're in Australia, then you might want to look out for these Montmartre H2 oil, or the water mixable oil paints, right? Now these are probably student grade, but they're actually quite a good quality um, student grade paint. I've done a number of paintings with these uh, Montmartre ones. They were the first ones that I used. The only thing I found is that in the uh, climate we're here in Queensland, where it's fairly hot and humid, uh, they do tend to get a little bit greasy, a little bit oily. So I started with those and playing around, and then I then went and looked for another brand, and um, I thought I'd try the Windsor & Newton version, which is the Artisan. Okay, these are water mixable oil paint. I'll explain what the difference between regular oil paint is in a moment. And I found these to be quite good, and I'll give you a little bit of a demo on the board in a moment, uh, just to show you how I use the Artisan water mixable oil. First thing though, water, oil. <laughs> Does it make sense? Well, what happened is, if you look at regular oil paint, right? So if you look at the Winton equivalent in Windsor and Newton, so that's their oil painting equivalent. Um, basically what's in a tube of paint is typically the pigment and linseed oil, okay? Now, depending on the quality of the paint will determine how much pigment's in there. Sometimes cheaper brands, they put in filler, right? And just stuff to bulk it out, but the pigmentation is not that strong. So you need to check that. And that's why we always say to you know, use the best quality paints you can buy. So in the regular oil paints um, of any brand, it's pigment, right? Which is like a ground up powder and it's mixed with a linseed oil. So you know how sometimes when you squeeze out the tube, there's a little bit of oily residue on some of the colors, not all of them, but some. Well, that's the linseed oil that's maybe separated a little bit from the pigment. So that's what's in regular oil paint. So what is in a water mixable oil paint? Well, I was surprised to learn when I did the research that what's in a regular tube is pigment and linseed oil. It's exactly the same uh, raw ingredients in the water mixable version of the oil paints. What's different? Well, scientists, and I don't know how this works, right? I'm not a scientist, but somehow they've, they've modified the molecular structure of the linseed oil so that it becomes compatible with water. And what that means is you can start to break down these water mixable oils. So in every other regard, they're the same as normal oil paints, right? But you can break them down with water and you can clean your brushes with water, right? Two huge factors because I, I love oil painting, but I, I've stopped oil painting because of the solvents, right? They're bad for my health and um, I didn't like using them, the odor in the house and you know, a whole lot of reasons. I just knew that they weren't good and I've been painting in acrylics mostly. Um, but now that I've discovered these, I'm excited. So let me just reiterate that in every other regard, these paints are just like regular oil paints. Um, it just that they've modified the linseed oil slightly to be compatible with water, whereas previously it wasn't, okay? And so I thought, well, if that's true, let me test it out. And so I went and got myself a range of the Artisan uh, water mixable oil paints, and I've started doing some paintings with them. And um, I'll show you one of the paintings. If you've been following my show for a while, you'll know that I'm a landscape painter and an oil painter, uh, sorry, seascape and landscape painter, right? So that's one of my paintings there. It's a classic sort of um, traditional Australian landscape painting, right? And that's all done with water mixable oil paint. So the end result's quite good. I'll talk to you about one of the downsides of these that I've found. There aren't many, but I'll talk to you about that in one moment. But first, let's have a look at the paint, all right? So when you take a tube of the, uh, French ultramarine blue and you squeeze it out onto the my makeshift palette there the consistency of that is almost identical like I, in fact I can't tell any difference uh, with the artisan equivalent sorry the Winton equivalent I've got to get my terminology right here so I'm using the Winsor & Newton brand artisan is the water mixable 
Winton is the traditional oil paint. Okay, so let's have a look at it. It breaks down with water. So I'll take a big brush. I've got a bucket of water. It's a little bit dirty because I've been doing some painting, but I'll just wet the end of my brush and let's just pull out some of this paint here. And as you can see, it thins down, it breaks down pretty much like, you know, regular oil paint. Looks the same, right? That's just broken down with a bit of water. Now there are mediums that go with water mixable oil paints. Just because it's water mixable doesn't mean you necessarily want to only use water. But I'm gonna just talk to you about one method of using them here, which is how I've been using them, is just purely with water, okay? So the paint breaks down really nicely, okay? Like so. So let me just pop that brush in the water and I'll get another couple of colors. So this is our uh, alizarin crimson or permanent alizarin crimson. Okay, and again, you can see that that's nice and thick, it's buttery. It's just like we'd expect any oil paint to be, okay? And um, it surprised me really because I was expecting the fact that it was water mixable. I was expecting it to be a little bit more on the acrylic side. Um, but it really is more just like a regular oil paint. And once I understood about the fact that it was the same raw ingredients, I just modified the molecular structure of the um, linseed oil, it made a lot of sense, right? So if I get just a little touch of water on the brush and I'll scoop some of that blue up and we'll just pull out some of that red. Okay, we'll mix that together. You can see that goes nice dark tone um, in the same way I'd expect any oil paint to do. And as good as the acrylic paints that we use, and if I take more water with that, I can thin that right out and spread that paint quite easily. Okay. So if you're doing a, a wash or a, a block in, you can see that that little bit of water enables us to move that paint around, right? Um, that's a little bit on the blue side, so I can take a little bit more of that red and a touch more water. I'll work some of that red back into it just to get a, a darker, warmer tone there. Okay. So very, very easy to move that paint around. The other thing I thought would be interesting to do is try it with a palette knife just to see how well um, you can, you know, move the paint around with a palette knife. And you can see it's nice and buttery and thick and it behaves like any regular oil paint. But there's a couple of differences, right? I'll take a bit of that blue and I'll mix the blue and the yellow there. Okay, and they mix quite well. Okay. As you would expect, you know, just from regular old oil paint, um, it's not a lot of difference between the two, right? So you can see there, nice mix of the yellow ochre and the permanent alizarin, and then the yellow ochre and the ultramarine blue, gives you two very nice different tones there. And um, using the palette knife, we can scrape off a nice thick roll of the paint there. And then we come along and we could then put that wherever we want, like a grassy embankment, for instance, right? And maybe it's got a little highlight of yellow across the top, right? So all the tools work well. You can see this is run now because I've had too much water and I've, you know, I've got a lot of vertical, uh, but you can see how the water's run out. It would do the same if it was acrylics, okay? It would also do the same if that was, uh, if I was using, you know, any sort of solvent with regular oil paint and I use too much, okay? So here's the big advantage I think of the water mixable oil paint. And that big advantage is that you can, well, first of all, there's no odor and there's no fumes and there's no toxicity. And that was a big thing for me. I stopped using oil paint for that very reason. Even though I'd go out plein air painting, you know, I'd go out and I'd spend a day, do two or three paintings, put it all in the car and then come back and I might be driving for an hour, but the car would be full of fumes, right? And it was not good for my health. And, and I love oil painting, and I was disappointed that I couldn't really continue, and I started using the acrylics. Um, now, I love the acrylics as well. They dry fast, and it's a big frustration for, for uh, a lot of people. So with this water mixable oil, if you're just using the water, there's no mediums, no solvents if you don't want to. Now, I'm gonna do another video about the mediums, um, but you could just do water. And that painting I showed you before, I've only used water in that to thin the paint down. Okay, and you, I've just shown you an example here. You can thin the paint down to a medium viscosity or to a very loose, 
and then you can mix the paint neat without any water and using a palette knife to mix it and so on and you can still get nice mixes with thick viscous paint and it's nice and buttery it's great to work with it feels just like oil right uh, but here's the other big advantage is when you finish painting you put put your brush in a bucket of water right you get it nice and wet and then you just clean it out with paper towel see that i just pull that paint out of the brush with paper towel and water right now you could use soap and so on if you really want to get it clean I only buy cheap brushes, so I don't fuss too much about the cleaning. As long as all most of the pigments out of that, I'm happy. Um, and yeah, I, I don't see any downside at all of using these water mixable oils. Okay. Now, the one little thing that maybe uh, bugged me a little bit, and it could be my working process. I have to look at it closer is that the colors got a little bit gray when I started to mix them and work with them and, and do little overlays and things like that. They got a little bit gray. Um, but you know, for a landscape painting, I'm not sure that that's really a problem. You want things to gray off in the distance, especially, right? So that was the one potentially downside. So the big question is, how do these dry? They're oil paints. Do they dry like acrylics, or do they dry like oil paints? Well, what happens is there's a two-stage drying process here, and the first stage is happening right now. And this is actually no different from oils. I'll point out in a moment. Um, but the first stage is that water that I had in here. You can see it's drying off under the studio lights here. It's quite hot. That water's going to evaporate. So the first stage of drying is when the water is going to dry off. Okay. Um, you know, that's no different from using a solvent. So when I was using regular oil paints, I would use a gum, um, gum, eucalypt gum terps, right? And I'd do my washes in my darks with a wash like that. Very thin pigmentation and a lot of solvent. And then I'd wait for it to dry off because it would evaporate in... in 20 minutes right so I'm using exactly the same and then the second phase of drying with these water mixable oil paints is they're going to dry like regular oil paints so oil paints dry through oxidation exposure to oxygen and they take you know five to seven days to be touch dry and they take six months to be fully dry right six months to a year before you want to glaze over them and so on um, no different from regular regular oil paints so Here's the thing, if you're an acrylic painter who's frustrated, right, because the paint dries too quick, have a go at water mixable oils. Um, but just be aware that when you put down your first layer, it's going to be wet when you work back into it. So you need to start to learn how to work a la prima, right? So wet into wet, um, which is how I typically work anyway with oil paints because you know, plain air painting, go out and do a painting in one sitting, it's a la prima, right? So that's the first thing. So if you're a frustrated acrylic painter who gets frustrated with it drying too quick, have a go at water mixable oils. If you're an oil painter who has any health issues or you have concerns over solvents and um, the toxicity and, and the smell and so on, have a go at these. I really can't recommend them enough. I'm not getting paid to endorse, and I'm not necessarily endorsing this brand or the Montmart brand. They're just the ones I've tried, right? There's a whole lot of different brands of water mixable oil. It's up to you to go out and find a brand that works for you that you're happy with and uh, give it a go. I, I actually love it. I've done half a dozen big paintings with it now and it's probably my uh, go-to painting from now on. And I'm gonna go out and do a lot more plein air painting with these because I know it'll stay wet long enough to work into whereas acrylics are terrible for plein air painting. So I hope that helps. Water mixable oil paints, almost the same as working with oil paints. Worth having a go. See you next week on the uh, art studio chat if you've enjoyed this week please like comment share and uh, subscribe we would really appreciate it drop by the learn to paint academy as well for more uh, ideas and courses and projects and things and i'll see you next week on art studio chat cheers for now